This here is called the Gimpy Gimpy plant, also nicknamed the Stingin' Roger. It's also nicknamed the Suicide Plant, because back in the Anzac days, one of the soldiers was camping out in the bush, hung a shit, and they needed something to wipe his ass. He got one of these, wiped his ass with it. The pain was that bad, and it didn't stop. He shot himself in the head. This video is sponsored by Jason Stevenson. If you guys are looking for some awesome guided meditations and want a free ebook, then go check out his website, jasonstevenson.net. This will not only help you deepen your meditation practice, but ultimately it will prepare you for future psychedelic experiences, which is always handy. And I also want to give a quick shout out to all our amazing Patreon supporters. You guys are legends. How you going, mate? Hey, mate. Nice day for a row. So we're going to Byron Bay and we're going to do some yoga and face painting. We're going to be in Vishuddha Das. <laughs> yeah, Vishuddha Das. <laughs> They try to do it with brute strength. I know. Like, it's just the, the masculine way. Oh, <laughs> <So> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the lesson. You know Bill Burr, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so like, he like, they were interviewing him on this like morning talk show thing. And I guess in his latest special, he made a joke on the Catholic Church. Like, Did he? Yeah, and they're like, they're like, don't you think you're going too far with that joke? And he's like, don't you think the Catholic Church went too far? Oh, right. With the kids? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's yeah. like, interesting how much we get into that defensive mentality. Exactly. Um, like, clickbait. Oh. I've never done this. You just put on your shirt? Yeah. Um, Do I just clip this on my skin? Or? <laughs> 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 ah, it's okay. It's not bleeding it. and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Stick it yeah, in there. talking about culture's not your friend and... Yeah, yeah, like you said with the Bill Burr thing, like, um, don't you think you're going a bit too far, you know, making fun of, like, yeah, Christians? Yeah, like, they try to don't spin the news to towards him yeah. going too far, making a joke about the Catholic priests and what they did. Yeah. And he's like, don't you think the Catholic <laughs> priests went too far with what they did, you know? And then they try to, like, change the subject. And, like, and he's like, oh, yeah, this is a morning talk show. I think that's what's good, though, is when you don't hold back. Like, he makes it, like, such, even, like, simple situations like that and, like, popular culture, like, in the news, like, show yeah. how much everything is just spun so heavily. Well, yeah, it's people just get upset when you make fun of their thing, but then yeah. it's okay if you make fun of other people's things. It's like South Park's philosophy. It's, like, it's either all okay to make fun of or nothing. Yeah, 100%. So. That's how it should be. Like, yeah. that's, Bill Burr had a big thing, too. He's like, you know, comedians should never apologize for their gigs because that's how they were thinking in the moment, and they should right. like, learn like, to see that. to be reckless. Yeah, exactly. Well, what's interesting, too, what I realized a lot, especially from going to India, was just how much, like, there's no such thing as, like, PC culture there. You know what I mean? Oh, like, uh, yeah? It, well, because okay. think about this, like, we don't have massive problems in first world countries. Like, no, no, no. like we have we, them, we, but they're we, a lot smaller. Yeah. Our issues are we like real problems. issues. So we create those problems yeah. to fulfill our problem obsession. Mm. When you're over there, like that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Their problems are actual big, gigantic, real Whoa. world problems, like of survival almost in a lot of cases. Like, we don't have time to worry about your fucking feelings about yeah, what you want yeah, to be called yeah. or whatever. Like, oh. cause like even yeah. there, you know, uh, how the swastika originally came from Eastern cultures, like yeah. they are everywhere there. But in America, especially, like, at college campuses, people get offended if you wear, like, the original swastika yeah. or have a tattoo yeah. of it, because, even though it's completely the German army stole exactly. it. Exactly, yeah, yeah, But yeah. things like that, it's like we find ways to be outraged because it gives us that kind of sense and that feeling. Outrage of, like, culture. Outrage culture, yeah. 100%. And, I mean, yeah. there are things you should be upset about, but it's just interesting also when you go to a country like that and you yeah. realize how much you're upset about isn't really worth that much <laughs> energy to be upset no. about. That's what I kind of realized. Like my first day there, I was like, wow, all my problems are really not as big a problem no. as I initially thought they it, were. It's sobering traveling. Like I couldn't even imagine India, but even just South yeah. America, which is obviously- I'm sure got, it's like got, similar too. They have a lot of got, issues They've got a lot more problems than let's yeah. say Australia. So yeah. people are way less PC over there. Yeah. We're taught that there's always going to, like, there should always be something going on or something wrong or something to be upset about, you know, instead of just being at peace and happy. That's the- What do you think that is? Like we create these problems. It's like, I don't know, are we just naturally problem solvers like we just want to do think, shit with our time like what, what is that about i think like, we why, are, can we just be have this perfect <laughs> n 
world full of Nirvana and not deal with anything? Like, are we just going to invent a new problem? I don't think we can anytime soon, but <laughs> maybe in a few thousand years. A few thousand years <laughs> if we make it. Yeah, if we make it through the... I think if that... Not, we'll just press the reset button and start again. <laughs> maybe I'm just like overly optimistic, but I always have a thought that if like pushed to the brink of like destruction, humanity would change their ways. Like, I, just, I believe nothing, that too. I believe that. Na I'm, nature's tendency is to go towards the positive end of yeah, priority. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so and like it's, it's just like that. survival is life, more important, so. you know. So I think I yeah. think at this point, you know, it all goes back to like, have you seen uh, the Century of the Self? No. The documentary. Really? That sounds epic, though. <sighs> it's my favorite documentary I've ever watched. Really? So it's a three-part documentary. Each so, part's an hour is it long. On Netflix. You can find it on YouTube, I think, or on Google. Okay. But it's all about Edward Bernays, who was the nephew of Sigmund Freud, the psychoanalyst, oh, who like basically developed, right. like understood how like uh, our repressed urges like fuel our reality and like how what we're taught to like feel we feel in a lot of different ways. So like Edward Bernays studied under Sigmund Freud. Is like he's his nephew. He was with him all the time. He like Whoa. watched him do his work. But he was like he's like the modern supervillain. Like he took all that information and was went to companies and was like, I can teach you how to control people. My uncle, you know, has all this information. I'll show Whoa. you how to use it. So he was actually, one of the first things he did was just to, I think it's the big thing about just creating identity. That's why we have mm. PC culture mainly, are like offended, getting offended, like you said, is like, it gives you an, a I'm rock to stand on. Well, yeah. I'm offended that you're offended that I'm offended. But you become an identifier, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you identify yeah, with sure. those things heavily and we all want to identify. It's of just, course. I feel like the more you grow, the more you want to identify with more positive right. things and the negative things. But one of the first things he did was he basically made a, a false campaign because uh, right that was like the first wave of like women's rights in America and like the suffrage movement, and he basically explained that like you know to a real real independent women smoke cigarettes you know they're they're out there doing their thing they're independent they are not controlled, and so come like a month or two later, they had a giant like parade for women's rights and like half of them by that time were already smoking cigarettes just from like word of mouth and like I don't know, I don't know if I saw that documentary where they were talking about something like that like the cigarette is like the phallic shape or yeah, something like that. Just, yeah, it was just it was just like, like that, that representation. All yeah. and that's what Edward Bernays like showed them. And once they realized that, that's how that's really in like the 1920s and 30s. Evil maybe genius. maybe even later. That's when like yeah. that's when you'll see that marketing touch took off that we saw so much of in like the 40s and 50s, like the I want you oh. campaign for the war and stuff. It all comes down to like your identifiers and like how you define yourself. It's crazy oh, how like, yeah, that's me, dude. Everyone loves fitting in. Like think about yeah. how I mean, even just with things like the army, like people like once they're in, they they leave, and like for the rest of their life, that's who they are. They're an army servicemen or something, you know. Yeah, exactly. Those identifiers yeah, program, yeah, program yeah. super heavily to I identify with the those army. things. I was yeah, super close to joining the army. Yeah. There's like a, a sign on one of these like women's clothing shops, and it says like the big letter says "Be that girl," like, you know. Really? Yeah, and like there's like these beautiful, perfect models behind it, and it's just so clear. Wow. I feel like once you kind of research it a bit, it's clear that's obviously like programming for the mind mm. but when you don't it's like yeah i do want to be that you know I, we just want to oh. figure out what we are that's all the ego cares about is so, so when, did this, when did this start what in, was this guy's the, name again edward bernays edward Ber edward bernays, bernays. He's, they call him the father of like modern like modern marketing or like advertising but it's because he used sigmund wow. freud's teachings he like turned them the opposite Evil direction <laughs> freud was like look you have a lot of issues this is why this like is, this is all about your mother yeah it's all about your mother and father and like your obsession yeah. with all these things and like yeah. you saw too many phallic shapes as a kid like, nah i think it's it go, it, like yeah it you're onto something but it goes deeper than that have you seen it a dangerous mind no i haven't seen that either it's a really good movie it's about freud uh, and jung freud and jung it's yeah good? It's really good Wesley, movie yeah. yeah it's good it kind of shows their meeting and their departure yeah, Through Jung, that. Jung definitely went like a whole other level with that. Freud thought he was like literally loony at the end of yeah. it. He's like, dude, there's no such thing as synchronicity. We're just like carbon-based life forms. That's yeah. it. We're sexually based. Nothing else real, matters. Man. And the more you see it, the more you attract it. Jung's and then like, you, yeah. yeah. I think Ram Dass talks about it. Like, uh, the more you walk on your authentic path, the more you're going to be in the flow. Of, until you're going to get to the point where your life is just a constant flux yeah, of yeah. synchronistic events. I know? think the hard part too, especially for me in my life and like people I talk to is on like the spiritual path, so to speak, you know, right, when you start right. trying to live it, is that you get, you get really caught up and when you're not in that flow, you know what I mean? Mm. You notice it a lot more because before, you know, when you're living regularly and just going to work and like not focusing on anything besides like your own material desires and wants and like fulfillments, the highs and lows are just part of it. You're okay with it, you know? Yeah. But once you start to learn, it's like you get to that point of like almost, uh, Awareness of what you can be doing your best and should be, you know, mm. might be doing your best if you were like in the right frame of mind. So when you're not in those spaces, you catch yourself and you get really like caught up in it, you know? You start feeling a lot more guilty, you start yeah. regretting yourself a lot more, you start thinking about what if I did this differently, all those that different self -doubt things. self-doubt demon yeah. enters your mind. And it's just the, yeah. kind of, the kind of wanting of that spiritual path to always be at the high point, you know? This like ecstatic state. 
Not yet. Like a lot of people, when they find it first, they're like, oh, this book is everything. My yeah, life's changed. Then yeah, they kind of yeah, yeah. go downhill because, you know, you're now then now you got to integrate that information. And that's boring, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So. In there, Ram Dass talks about that too, about like how we always want to override those negative yeah. feelings instead of just working yeah, yeah. with it, you know? That's the hyper masculinity. Like that, that's been one of my biggest issues mm. is like getting, getting, becoming vulnerable literally is so difficult, I feel like. Yeah, man. In the Western yeah. world, especially being raised as like a man, it's like, that's, that, there's that whole complex of like, you gotta be in control of your emotions all don't the time and like, yeah, don't be a pussy. You, you know, wanna be a pussy and yeah. being a pussy is, what is it? <laughs> open, warm and persuasive. Literally, right? yeah. <laughs> it opens you up to the universe. <laughs> what is, did, didn't Dave Chappelle have a thing like that? Yeah, maybe I, I am a pussy. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm warm and persuasive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's true, dude. Thing. It's hard to break that programming though. It's really hard. Yeah. I know, and it, we're talking about it now, but then those old program will kind of come in and... Well, that's what my, uh, uh, the Swami I studied with in, in, I studied with in California, Swami Sarvadevananda. He, yeah. he would like, when he'd say like a big philosophical thing in the lecture, he'd like stop and make fun of himself. Like, oh yeah, you're God, you know? Cause like <laughs> his whole thing was like me saying this, you're going to feel good for a minute. Cause I'm saying that and you're like, yeah, I'm God, you know, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, and then you're, you're going to forget it the rest of your life unless exactly. you go home and put the work in, which exactly. is the hardest part. So he'd even, he'd even treat that big sentence as like a joke, you know? And it is a joke until you find a way to integrate it, which oh, yeah. is... Well, it's like your real life. That's the real ceremony. 100%. That's the trip. Yeah. We're going to head back now, so... Um, uh, you guys still keen to go to Springbrook? Yes, absolutely. You're going to come to Springbrook? Where's that? That's an epic place. It's, still cool. it's recording like constant everything. Oh yeah, the B-roll. Yeah. Lots of B-roll. That was my first thing to film when I was in India. It's just Jared's ass. Yeah, yeah. good shot. You should zoom in on that. It's gonna be the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I just think if I should bring the gimbal. No, nah, don't bring it, man. You gotta climb a waterfall. Oh, so bring nothing, not even my camera. Like, I'm bring bring my waterproof camera. stuff. Waterproof <laughs> stuff. If you want. Is it waterproof? No. Uh. I've got a sandwich bag you can have if you can trust a sandwich bag to hold whatever it is you want to save. I'll take one. <laughs> We're going out in the jungle, oh. nothing but a knife Thanks, bro. and a wall. have one? Oh. Let me leave my wallet here then. Yeah, you stepped yeah. into some real shit, man. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love going through that back in the woods. Yeah. The outback. As long as you put air in your sandwich bag, they float. And then if they yeah. start to sink, that's when you know you've got to yeah. fucking get them. These are good ones. These are double sandwich bags. Yeah. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. 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 That's how I filmed all that stuff up at the other place after we shot the mushroom stuff. Oh, yeah. I went, oh, went I back with some notice. sandwich bags. Yeah, right. Yeah. I didn't even notice. Poor man's waterproof. <laughs> yeah. That's very clever. This is seriously that crazy. Bro, you're a fine waterproof in here. He's got a GoPro. That's nice. Nuts. 8 yeah, plus. I got a GoPro, bro. I got a camera. iPhone 8 plus. Is yeah, waterproof of course it's waterproof, well. dude. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. They've been waterproof since like... Like iPhone 5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, fine with me, right? Oh, now. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious? I got the iPhone 7 and it's waterproof, and that's the 8. So there you yeah, go. it's gotta be. Mine but then again, the S5 was waterproof and then the S6 wasn't. Why are you putting doubt in that? And then the S7 was. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking little tricks they're gonna fucking throw in a little, but what if this? Uh, <laughs> I'm onto you, mate. <laughs> We're going where? Here, man. I had a, one of the best trips of my life. Standing right yeah. here. Nah. So we're going in that. But I was standing here, I had one of the best trips of my life. I was just staring into that, to all the trees. And all of a sudden it just went large. And it was just all green patterns, like a, you know those patterns you see on these big sheets? Yeah. It was like that, just and I was just like in it, like what? How am I seeing this? My mate was trying to get my attention. I was like, just staring into like this massive pattern that I just couldn't unsee. And he like, Jared, Jared, like, what? And it was gone. That, that was something, something different. I don't know what that was.
This here is called the Gimpy Gimpy plant, also nicknamed the Sting and Roger. Sting That's where and I Roger. get the Sting and Roger name from, from this. And if you if I went to touch that right now, the little micro stinging nettles that are all all over the leaf, you can't see them, but they're all there, really fine little hairs full of venom. And if you touch that, that goes into you, you'll feel it instantly, and it's just the worst pain ever, like full on tenses up and you actually throw up, like you vomit because it, the pain's so excruciating. Oh. And the pain can actually last for like months if you don't do something about it. If you don't like get wax and wax it out, it'll still like inject the venom and make you feel so bad for so long. Oh. And um, it's also nicknamed the suicide plant because back in the Anzac days, one of the soldiers was camping out in the bush, hung a shit and they needed something to wipe his ass. He got one of these, wiped his ass with it. The pain was that bad and it didn't stop. He shot himself in the head. Like Australia. Stinger Roger, mate. The bloody Stinger Roger. <laughs> Watch out for them bloody Stinger Rogers. They will kill you. <laughs> Would you touch it for a thousand bucks? No. No? 10,000? Th no. 100K? Yeah. 100K cash in a briefcase? I would have to think about it. <laughs> That's how skits it is. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah? Nah, fuck that. Did you do it? 100k? Right hundred thousand dollars? I don't know. If I maybe if I didn't know how deadly it was. <laughs> maybe before Jared's speech. Yeah. <laughs> now probably not. Nah. <laughs> not worth it. Pretty sure there's also a story of someone got stung by it and it was that bad they threw themselves off a cliff just to kill themselves oh. to get to get away from the pain. Be careful on the ground because if it has dead leaves, they're still active. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so be wary of. Any brown leaves. Oh, look how fucking close I got it to my foot. Jesus Christ. Yeah, nah. Oh. Even if you nipped it. Oh. Nah, just, no, just no, stay, away right. stay away from it. Stay away from it. Don't even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. You okay? Yeah, just means to be put. Nah, it's all good. I just think I'm gonna see this jagged block. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh. 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 standing probably like right here imagine the sun like it's gone down and it, everything here is all shadowy like as shadowy as all this area and I was standing here just like with a bunch of mates just like you are now everyone's talking amongst each other and my mate's standing there pretty much where you are talking to me and I'm like looking at him and then I feel this rising up my feet like a full-on energy and like a like a snake kind of spine like like 
serpent energy, like two of them, like that symbol. Yeah. Of two snakes going through your legs and up your spine. I just like felt it like rise up. And as it was rising up, the sound, like sound was dissipating and turning into that like real high. Mm. Like real like ringing in the ears. And then I was looking at these trees just here, all these bushes and every single bit of um, leaf and and bit of just anything was just like glowing bright white golden light just kind of slowly shimmering off it and then it started to come off everything else the ground and it was like that scene in um interstellar where like at the end he's like falling in that trippy fourth dimensional realm or whatever fifth dimensional realm and he like cracks the code yeah. and then all of a sudden he just like when he figures it out it like all goes away and turns into that big light yeah. he just goes, and disappears. That's exactly what it was like. Everything was just turning into light, fractals of light, and then all of a sudden I was just like, as this um, sensation's going up my body, and then as soon as it reaches my head, and all every at the same time everything just like turns into this light. I just go, and it started, I, like I was like, and I was gone. Oh, something's happening, and then like I felt my legs, and then it went up, and then boom, I was gone for like what felt like a million years, and then shot back, which felt like I got shot back in the past but it'll still the present it's so hard to explain that's just the only closest Never, thing yeah. yeah that's why people think you're crazy because you can't explain it yeah because you can only really paint a metaphorical picture that's it yeah it's that's all you've got yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's something like beyond human comprehension what's the word <laughs> analogies and shit like yeah, all that exactly. all those english words but um yeah i couldn't even draw it if i tried to explain what it's like but yeah that oh. that happened right there that's, that's awesome man but, but that's not the coolest part about that, is because before I had that, I used to always have dreams of this place, of this hill, but like in a different dimension. Like in a dream dimension. It's a premonition. Yeah, almost. Like it felt like, like my girlfriend, who I'm with now, I like, I had a dream about her three years before I even met her. Mm. And the dream was, I was like in love with this other girl, a brunette, and then like I couldn't like, like, get over it because uh, I didn't we didn't want to I didn't want to be with her or anything like that but I just couldn't get her out of my mind yeah. and one day I just went to sleep had this dream that I was up here floating in a awesome white golden space but there was like flowers and trees but I knew it was on here because I used to come up here a lot when I was a teenager and um, I was floating here and my girlfriend now she was like wearing this cool like white kind of sun kind of dress just looking back at me like like trickling flowers and stuff and just smiling at me and I couldn't really make out her face but I just remember she was smiling and I was just in love just like so love so peaceful just floating and then um, I woke up from that dream and I overslept and I was like who was that chick and that was the most realest dream I've ever had and I was like an emotional hitting dream and then I had even that was three years and then three years later I met my girlfriend and then just so many synchronicities happened when I met her and that was straight after I had this Kundalini experience here three years after that dream and many other trippy dreams that involved this hill I had that Kundalini experience went on my like first awakening journey like going oh my god blah blah blah, blah for like two months and I met her three months later pretty much That's fucking insane dude. Yeah Thank you.